Hi guys, this is Breaker, and I'm back with a replay that I took from the front page of Drop.sc. Now, of course, this one kind of stood up um, from the rest of them, because, of course, let me go ahead and both introduce both players before I continue. In the lower right-hand corner, spawning is I in the red trunks. His name is Frey Petraeus. And in the upper left-hand corner, spawning is our blue Terran. His name is Xenocider, and this certainly isn't my first time casting a Xenocider. Um, his name looks relatively familiar. I'm thinking perhaps I casted him playing against Tydrokos or uh, Dire Strait, perhaps Hephaestus, uh, members of the EXE clan. And uh, the map we are on right now is Echelon Flats. And, um, you know, I, I did just get done casting a TVP on this map. But um, honestly, I, I don't mind giving it another go. So, yeah. Excuse me, the, the, I know this isn't another TVP, but I mean, I, I don't mind giving it a, another go on this map. Um, this is a part of my two-part daily series, if you will. I'm trying to boost my, I suppose you could say, confidence with public speaking. Among other things. But, um, you know. I don't know, um is one of those filler words that everybody uses. It's kind of like saying like all the time in the middle of a sentence in English. But um there we go again. It's one of those things I gotta learn to get out of let learn to get out of the habit of saying. Back to the production tab. This leads me to believe that I mean, based on what we see right now, um Xenocider is going to go with the Reaper opening. It seems to be, you know, basically the traditional Terran meta. But the one thing that really drives me nuts about uh, basically ZVP or even you know more more likely TVP these days is that we're seeing less and less brood lords. Um, the reason being, like basically, the meta behind making brood lords is your opponent just makes mass void rays or mass Vikings, and honestly, I. I I just have no clue. Like, I mean, vipers sure they could get the job done slightly. But they can only do so much, really. I mean, three to four Vikings will always be left over for um, how many Vipers you have. And, of course, Ghosts also negate Vipers as well. Um, you know, I mean, it's not so much the Lasso that they have, the Abduct, if you will, as it is, say, the Blinding Cloud. And even, even some Zerg players, myself included, are having trouble really making effective use of Vipers in that aspect. But the one thing... You know, the one thing that I think is absolutely sick about them is being able to use Bane Links in conjunction with Vipers. They, that can be quite powerful. Um, Ultralists, of course, but they, eh, they're they not quite as effective as Bane Links, in my opinion. just depends. Are you going up against Marines, or are you going up against... You know, what, what, just what, what on earth are you going up against? Any Reaper arrives in the main... This is actually some pretty high-level play right here, guys. Like, no, this is pretty legit what we're seeing. Oh, my God, but, you know, I think we saw, you know, Xenocider just basically, he overcommitted to trying to make a kill with that first Reaper. Didn't get anything. In fact, he actually is kind of behind with this. He's lost 100 resources. That would be 50 minerals, 50 gas that he's not getting back. And if he tries to go in there again, you know, this queen's going to shut him down. What about the Lings? What about the Lings? It looks like they're trying to get to them. No, they almost, but... You know, almost only counts in atomic bombs and horseshoes, right? Factory going down at the natural command center. A third command center at that. Going down for Xenocider. So it looks like we have both players kind of opting for a bit of a macro game. Of course, Zergs are forced to go macro. This, you know, I mean, that, that basically goes without saying. But um, the choice to go macro seems to be entirely Xenociders for the time being. He is kind of following this up with uh, what appears to be some kind of harass play, if you will. The question is just what kind of harassment will it be? Since we don't see a starport in production, at least not one that I can see, then I'm thinking it's going to be Hellions. Perhaps defensive Widow Mines straight into macro mode, but that in itself is particularly dangerous against Zerg because if Zerg gets more workers than you do without any harassment, then, you know... It's uh, even delayed mining time. Delayed mining time is completely invaluable. Um, then it can it can be quite devastating. But here we go. Petraeus just goes ahead and sends out a handful. Of they, they run into a bunker. 
Just a single bunker, and they're all going to try and run past it and get to the mineral line. Beautiful, simple, elegant. Loses a few circlings as they make a run by, and does get a couple of worker kills, but of course the the DPS from the Marines and the Marauders here is a little too much to actually uh, allow the Lynx to actually get any kills on tanking Zerglings, but let's, or excuse me, tanking SCVs, but now the Zerglings have, like, just two hero Zerglings have escaped right now, and he's basically rapidly clicking them around, and I guess you could say a, a manner of dancing. Behind this, he takes his third. Beautiful. Beautiful. Like, that's the thing about Akalon Flats, you have to be absolutely aggressive. Behind this, he's putting down his Spire, as well as, uh, as well as his Banelink Nest, and he's got a bit of a SimCity going here. It's gonna, you know, this is working quite beautifully for him. Fortunately, it looks like he had, uh, a couple of his links actually legitimately destroyed. Behind that, he's spreading creep over here. Not really, you know, this is actually beautiful and effective use of Overlords and a shoe streak budget. If you guys will just pay attention to what he's doing here, it's it's like he's not wasting queen energy on things that he doesn't need. The injects go, are going straight to larv going straight to larva. Sure, he's floating a little bit on his queen at the natural, and of course he's going to be using that queen at the natural to try and drive these hellions. And the hellions are going to go over here to the third immediately and check for it. But at the same time, we see him trying to make ultra use of what he's got given the shoe. Excuse me, given the shoestring budget of what we see here. Going back to Xenocider for now, it looks like he's elected to go with a bio follow-up behind this. We, of course, you know, in production we can see plus one and plus one. That would be, um, you know, barracks, units, weapons, and, uh, of course, stem. Marines coming out two, three, four at a time. Three SCPs as well. Two missile turrets in production as well. Um, he realizes, you know, this is just screaming mutas, especially once, especially once your hellions are being chased down by mutas. And it looks as though we have uh, Petraeus basically committing to his muta tech because, of course, we do see the plus one attack. It looks like the hellions kind of fly, kind of like run past them just a little bit, and the mutas are going straight to the main. There's a missile turret waiting for them at the mineral line, and plenty of marines as well. So for now, um, we basically have, with that being said, Frey Petraeus being given map control. And he is able to prevent his opponent from taking his third here, or here, for the time being, so long as he chooses. But behind this we see that a brave-faced Xenocider is going to try and move in the orbital command to this little place. Um, we do have the Hellions moving out here as well, trying to basically you know, just figure out what Petraeus was there in production. Kind of rolling, and Bane Speed is now finished as well. Oh, I, you know what would be so effective? What if you were to put the Bane Link's right here? Losing a single Hellion there, Xenocider pulls back all of his. Uh, he pulls back all of his Hellions. All his remaining Hellions. Many of them are just one hit from his Mind Caller, that is, if they run from his Mind Caller, they will die. And Xenocider is now leaving his Planetary Fort, just kind of open there. Not throwing down any defensive infrastructure, no missile turrets, no bunkers, no sim cities. But he'll, we'll see those eventually, I'm sure. He just really needs time to get them up. Plus one attack, plus one flyer attacks almost finished for Petraeus, and plus two uh, melee attacks are on there as well. So plus two carapace for Petraeus. Now would be more than the appropriate time for him to pick a third, especially when his opponent to be a fourth, especially when his opponent probably finished up his third. Hellions have already been shut down, so that means like zero map control. Not even map contestment for Petraeus. It should be Xenocider in the near future. Fourth base going down now for Petraeus, just as I said he should take it. And this seems to be basically the timely thing, the timely order of, uh, you know, when Zerg should be menacing Terrans. But I want to say that the position that we see Xenocider in right now is quite strong, given the amount of supply that we have. However, we also have uh, Petraeus going for his Hive Tech at the same time. And let's check the army supply right now. It's actually much, much heavier in favor of uh, Xenocider for the time being. So, you know, we just have to see meticulously careful use of Marines, as well as Mines. That is the same for the Mines. But Viking going out here, trying to clear away these Overlords. I'm a little curious, is there a Viking here? No, it's a Medivac. And unfortunately, there is an Overlord. 
or if you respond to that, is it going to, what's the reaction? It looks like, basically we have the eyes of Petraeus set over here while his overlord is being taken down. And the question is, do the, do the mutas react appropriately? I believe they will. But we're going to have to see, you know, oh no, I see what this is. Xenocider's thinking, okay, there's going to be a point phase here. That's an entirely flawed empty. He didn't really check for the fourth right here. As you can see, he has no clue that it's even there. But of course, by perhaps by process of elimination, certainly now that he has, uh, certainly now that he has a meta back that just passed over the creep over there, um, he should know that, of course, uh, there's one thing there. Ooh, Bailey connections, kind of sick, kind of sick. But, ah, uh, the Marine spread is still just a little too good, and it looks like, no, we have to see him be meticulously careful with those Marines. Xenocider, I think, you know, he, he's, he's going to be able to hold this just fine. Okay, so here we go, the Bayman's making their connections, but they will. Marines split up in groups of three. Widow Mine's trying to burrow where they can. Of course, the Overseers are coming over and getting full-blown detection on them. The supply difference is now 162 to 128. That's 30-something. If you check the combat supply right now, um, the army supply is 69 to 82. We have to see whenever Xenocider has left. We can use extremely effectively. It looks like this might be a bit more good. Perhaps not. It's now at the natural. Are we going to see our Zerg kind of pull back here? Medivac's coming in to heal, the, the Mutalists are actually, you know, they're not, they're not doing too well. It looks like this over here is kind of throwing down the contaminate, um, as it should, I guess. More and more Marines coming out, as well as Widow Mines. I'm thinking what that Overseer could have done, which would have been super effective, is perhaps putting the contaminate down on that factory. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, never underestimate the power of your overseers. You know, contaminate is possibly the ye the least used ability in the entire game of StarCraft. That's right. When when, when players have full energy overseers, they typically go for uh, you know four or five changelings, trying to get some vision on their opponent. But when used offensively in that manner, it can be quite effective. But with Atreus getting plus three, plus three. Excuse plus three and tightness, <clears throat> tightness plating, and of course we have a double medevac drop going into the main. It looks like it's been entirely picked up on. Um, the question is, do we have any mutalists or anything of that nature? It looks as though we do. Vikings and a small force of marines and marauders going up here, and oh, this is kind of actually tearing Petraeus quite thin. Xenocider, I think, is setting himself up for a very strong position in this game. Depends on where things go in the near future. All the mutas were just taken down, I believe. We don't mind still waiting here for the perfect opportunity to pounce on any fresh, fleshy drones that may be here. And of course, I think, you know, perhaps a medevac drop here would be a waste of time unless the Marines were to focus down the spawning pool over here. They're just really pecking away at the shields of the Ultra Lists, all their groups would be usually speaking. And the Widow Mines are getting ready to go off again. They're going for better positioning this time around, and it looks like they're going to set off in the middle of the mineral line. If nothing else, forcing the late mining time. Ouch! Look at those workers killed. 17 altogether. If we check the worker count right now, it's kind of fractional. It'll be somewhat insignificant in the near future. But at the same time, every bit of it, you know, it counts towards income. One thing I think we should definitely see from Xenocider right now is to snipe that spawning. That would be extremely powerful, but it looks like every opportunity is fine. Do that is being bombed from here. Baitlings in production, not quite finishing up, but I want to say the Ultralist just might be able to clean up this mess over here that's right outside of the point base for Petraeus. If we just check where all the reinforcements are going for Xenocider, he should be able to click over here and pull them forward. He's got his fourth base up and running right now. It looks for, like perhaps earlier there may have been a road circling or an overlord spring creep. I just wasn't paying close enough attention. Marines aiming at the Ultralist down here, just kind of tickling them with their, with their C-14 Gauss rifles. Yeah. Yeah. C-14 Gauss rifles. They actually do take the Ultralisks. It's not they probably, they probably feel like teammates. They probably feel like uh, actual act, act Acupuncturist needles. Oh my god. This is being targeted down right now. The rocks here, the defensive rocks. But the question is, are they going to be targeted down in the long run? It looks like they will, but 
Um, this entire main force from Petraeus will not be enough to actually bomb us down. This bio ball that we see from Xenocider. And now he's going to force the ball back. And of course, another medevac drop going down over here. What are the Marines going to do? Or are they just going to target down drones? It's like, yes, just drones. They're going to pick up an immediate because of the third, just as uh, we saw Petraeus maybe perhaps small forces over there, but of course there's only four of them. Huge force for Petraeus is actually the best one up here in the right hand corner, and it looks like Xenocide is completely oblivious to that base over there. It looks like, oh my god, he is! He's so close to it, but he's completely oblivious to it. Throwing down scans offensively, and still miraculously knowing nothing about that. The spine crawlers will be more than happy to, to deal with this medevac drop, but no odds. Uh, it's just hard to, hard to say where things are going to go. Here we go. Investors and their fungal growths much needed, being used, and Petraeus and 177 supply. Meanwhile, it looks like, oh my god, the spawning pool was sniped. Or was it? Yes, it was. So, this could be the beginning of the end for Frey Petraeus. He's got to be very mindful of what he can make and what he cannot. I cannot tell you the countless number of times I've missed, I've missed, I've, you know, I've, I've lost my spawning pool and I've just constantly hit the uh, S and then Z key. Alright, there we go. Finally, he realizes that he's going to go ahead and rebuild his spawn pool right now. And the scan going down on some damage that are in the middle of the right now. Um, double medevac, double empty medevac coming back to pick up some units in the past. Uh, but behind this, look, I can see, wow, Frey Petraeus? Wait, what? Uh, uh, I, I, hold up, what? Wait, what? What? I don't get it, guys. Why did Petraeus leave the game? Is it because of the investors? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. His army supply wasn't really behind that of Xenocider so much, and like the, the spawning pool? Where's the spawning pool at? I don't get it. Like. Did he lose all his queens? The spawning pool was about 60% finished. I, I don't get it. This was like... Did Petraeus... Is Petraeus like Idra on a Smurf account or something? I'm sorry guys. I'm just completely dumbfounded. Like... I... It, I it, uh, hold up. Checking the upgrades. Let's get rid of that. Plus three, plus three. Plus one air attacks, kiteness, and what 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 the hell is this? It's it's here every game whenever I hit the upgrades tab. It's basically I think a glitch with the uh, observer I'm using. Of course, there it says there are ghosts here, but I I don't think that's legit. Um, I I can't figure this out. His income was significantly higher. In fact, behind all of that, he could have thrown down another expo. Was he? They get dropped. It was, I guess, somewhere forced to cancel, but I just can't figure out where and when. There was an engagement up here. Hold on. Sorry. Let's go back a little bit. No. I'm completely dumbfounded. Like, yeah, there were drops left and right. Yeah, there were workers slaughtered left and right. Sure, a lot of them. Actually, not not a whole lot over the entire course of the game. I don't know what to make of this. Hold up. Maybe I'm putting entirely too much focus on just why this guy left the game. Sure, there, there were drops left and right, drops everywhere. Here, that this one I kind of missed. Okay, this is what I was looking for. Okay, let's see how did that. How did that go? No, I don't know about this. Ah, yeah. oh, okay. it got taken down. All right, but I I think the biggest thing for Petraeus is he probably didn't. He probably simply just did not know that his income was that. Like, it was ahead of that at this point. 
just the sound acceleration. Hey, this is like the final position of the top of the head. Get it. Maybe it was a disconnect or something, I don't know. But um, behind that, it looks like, I want to say perhaps, you know, just given the star ports, I, I don't know. Did, did he get vision on those? He didn't. Perhaps with the number of waters here, I don't know. Like, if he had simply pulled back, he would have been just fine. I mean, um, sure, marauders can kind of chase down whatever's here, but... You know, I just can't figure this out. If you guys can tell me just why this guy left the game, that would be great. There's something I don't understand. Really. Mm, boy, sorry about that. I, I just belched. Um, yeah. It, he wasn't really far down on army supply, and his worker supply was actually further than that of his opponent. Maybe it was because he didn't have a fourth base and he was actually trying to all in. Um. Maybe you thought, okay, well, my income is going to suck. Well, if that's the case, then you should double expo. And besides that, I forget it. Like, I, I just don't understand it. Anywho, if you guys like what you saw here today, just go ahead and click on the subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time.